guys, my name is Shay and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing Legacy Season 3, Episode 9. Do all Malibu monsters provide this level of emotional insight? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with a flashback to Belgium in 1933 and it shows Einstein and a woman packed panicking and rushing at their cottage. Three men burst into the cottage and one of the men is revealed to be Clark. Clark says that the man is a scientist and tells the others to toss the place to find something before someone else gets what they came for. Alaric is teaching and letting the students know about the monsters. Landon is curious and very interested in all of what has been happening at the school since he's been gone. Alaric says that they have been having problems and that's why they have to get the monster problem under control. Caleb says that he wants to nominate Cleo as a member of the Super Squad and everyone agrees, as they should. <laughs> we love and stand Cleo, for real. Hope and Lizzie are going back and forth and there is tension between them. Lowry tells him to work together while he is gone and he says that he is going to see a supernatural scholar about another lead. He says that they will summon the monster when he gets back at Mystic Falls. NG is having lunch with Josie and she is telling him that the school is very clicky. He says that he wants to try to fit in and wants to try out for the football team. MG sees a cheerleader from foot from afar and uses his, his hearing and knows that she is into him. Josie tells him to stop and to try being human with her and MG agrees. Ethan comes over and sits at their table and MG introduces himself. MG says that he is going to try out for the team and asks for some pointers. Ethan tells him to study hard instead because he got cut from the team. And I'm like, oh, because he was definitely worried about that in the last episode. Lizzie comes to talk to Caleb and says that she is not working with Hope. She mentions how she is trying to do something unlike Caleb, who was reading a comic book. Caleb says that MG is probably just out taking a walk, and Lizzie breaks the news to him that he enrolled in Mystic Falls, and that he will be staying with Josie. He says that Josie is MG's only friend, and that he will be back in no time. Caleb tells Lizzie that him reading the comic book is for research. He tells her that the pixie in the book is a kinder version of a genie that trades wishes for favors. He says that they can wish for them to close the portal as for payback. Lizzie has an idea that comes to her head, but she doesn't tell Caleb, of course, and she leaves. Hope and Landon are in the library talking about the tension between her and Lizzie. Landon says that the reason her and Lizzie are so mad at each other is because they are more alike than they think. He says that they are smart and powerful, which is who are willing to do anything for the people that they love, and that is so true. Hope says that she hopes she, he is wrong because she has a feeling she knows what Lizzie is planning to do next. Lizzie goes outside to run with Cleo and tells her that she is now a member of the Super Squad. Hope catches her and they go back and forth about summoning a monster. Landon tries to meddle in but Hope and Lizzie tell him to stay out of it. Lizzie tells Cleo to start the spell for summoning the spell, the monster, and Cleo says that the monster is already here. The monster is a pink small gremlin and Lizzie and Landon are fawning over it. Hope asks Cleo if she summoned the monster and Cleo says that she didn't and they have to be wary. Hope tells Lizzie to catch the gremlin and the gremlin just takes off running. <laughs> and this is a pink talking smack gremlin. <laughs> small. <laughs> the gremlin crawls into a gutter and then it sparks the heater that causes smoke. The gremlin pushes Lizzie into the pool and Lizzie thinks that Hope was the one who did it. Hope says that it wasn't her but it was a monster and Lizzie tells her to stay out of her way. Lizzie says that people always get hurt when she does. Laura and Dorian catch up about Emma and Mac, and I really, really miss Emma, but I'm glad that Dorian is back, so. He asks Dorian about the artifact, and Dorian says that he will give him a call when he learns new information. Alaric is just staring at Dorian and not leaving, awkwardly. Dorian asks Alaric if him being there is a coincidence or a cause for concern. Alaric mentions that Josie had black magic and she got checked out, but that type of magic can be tricky. He says that he hates spying on Josie and asks Dorian if he has any ideas. Alaric is the football team's coach and Josie and MG are trying to act cool. Josie asks MG to promise to not use his powers so Alaric won't suspect anything. Alaric is stretching and Josie tells him to look away. Landon is holding up cards and Hope is guessing and he tells her that they have to figure out the folk and the mythology. He mentions that it will go easier if her and Lizzie could work together. Landon asks Hope if she would apologize to Lizzie and Hope replies that she can't because if he disappeared again, she would do everything the same away. He tells her that she can't change the past but the present. Over the intercom, you hear Lizzie's voice making an announcement, but it is actually the pink gremlin disguising their voice. The gremlin, as Lizzie's voice, says that there is another monster on the loose and says that Hope is a true threat and that she has scabies. Hope's eyes light up and she is so mad and she goes to confront Lizzie at gym class. Ethan and Blake get into a fight and Alaric breaks it up. He tells the rest of the students to run laps and tells Ethan to pick up cones. 
Ethan is upset and aggressively kicks a soccer ball. Josie and MG come over and Josie says that things are perfectly fine. Alaric disagrees and MG tells him that Ethan got cut from the football team and that it's been hard for him. There is a truck speeding on the road as Ethan is picking up the ball and MG uses his speed to push him out of the way. Ethan is completely shocked and asks MG how can he move that fast. Hope confronts Lizzie about what she said on the intercom and Lizzie says, says that she was washing the chlorine out of her hair and has no idea what she's talking about. Lizzie and Hope are throwing jabs at each other. Lizzie says that Hope is only there for everyone when she needs something, and that's kind of true. And Hope says that Lizzie is the reason why Josie went dark in the first place, and I disagree with that. Cleo comes over and says that she believes both Hope and Lizzie. Caleb shows up and them shows them the skin of the gremlin, which was really gross. Hope says that what kind of monster molts, and Landon immediately answers the gremlin, and he is excited about the fact that it is a gremlin and nobody else is. <laughs> Like, nobody else is. Like, even I knew that it was a gremlin. Like, it took them a while to figure it out, but I instantly knew, knew that it was a gremlin. <laughs> Caleb lets them know that gremlins feed off of disrespect. Cleo says that the gremlin has been pitting Lizzie and Hope against each other. Lizzie suggests that they use Landon for bait for the gremlin, and he agrees. Landon tells Hope that the only way this is going to work is that they work together. Alaric, MG, and Josie are talking about how to handle Ethan knowing about MG's powers. They ask for Ethan's opinion, and he says that he would be dead without MG using his powers. Ethan says that he understands why they want to keep it a secret and that he is happy to keep it. Alaric tells MG to compel him, and he does. He compels Ethan that he is going to wake up the next day and try to find what makes him happy instead of football and go after it. Afterwards, Ethan says that he falls feels fine and that he doesn't rem remember a thing and they re they realize that he is on Bervain. Cleo and Caleb are talking about the monsters and Cleo says that she is not sure if she wants to be a part of the super squad. She says that she feels afraid and asks how she's supposed to feel safe and he grabs her hand. She pulls away and apologizes for misreading the situation. She tells Caleb to ask again when their lives are not in danger and I love that. But they are so cute together. So cute. Caleb leaves to go get another book, and there is a knight with glowing eyes watching Cleo. Hope and Lizzie are looking at a map in the gym and says to get ready. Landon says that the gremlin is not coming and is leaving off campus. Hope says that the gremlin does not want Landon, but someone else. Caleb comes into the gym and says that the gremlin took Cleo and he is worried about her. He has a lot of crossbow and says that he is going to get Cleo back and he is ready to fight to get her back. And he cares about her so much and is so freaking sweet. <laughs> Landon says that for once he doesn't need protection. He convinces Hope to go with Lizzie and Caleb to stop the gremlin while he stays at the school and watches over the others. Back at Mystic Falls, Ethan shows him the pills that he takes with Vervain in them. Ethan says that he took a pill in the morning after he worked out. Nellorick says that the vein the vein will be out of his system in a couple of hours. He tells MG to have that conversation with him again and to compel him, and if anything changes, to give him a call. He asks Josie to talk in private, and they leave. Ethan asks MG about his origin story, and MG says that he doesn't think that it's a good idea. Ethan says that his memories are going to be wiped away anyway, and says that it's the same as when Santana mind mopped Batman. They have this nerd moment where they bond over comic books, and it is so cute. The way both of their faces lit up talking about these comic books was adorable. It really was. <laughs> Caleb, Hope, and Lizzie are in the woods, and Caleb uses his hearing to hear something. He finds Cleo in a well tied up with vines, and Lizzie questions why this is so easy to rescue Cleo. The gremlin shows up, and it is a much larger and more uglier than before. It was kind of cute being all small and pink, but still kind of ugly. But now it is extremely hideous. <laughs> like, ew. <laughs> Lizzie questions why the gremlin is huge because Hope and Lizzie have been getting along since Landon's speech. Cleo says that it is her fault because she may have used some colorful language when the gremlin dragged her there. And I'm like, that is totally me. Like, I would be swearing left and right if that gremlin snatched me up. <laughs> For real. The gremlin marches over slowly to them and Caleb tries to shoot it, but that doesn't work. Landon shows up in Lizzie's car and tells him to defeat the monster. They have to respect each other. Ethan and MG are talking about him being a vampire. He says that while everything about being a vampire is cool, the hardest part was his parents not accepting him. Ethan mentions that his mother did everything she could to support him, including letting him stay at the Salvatore's at the Miss Mystic Falls to pursue his dreams. He says that getting cut hurts. Because he doesn't know how to tell his mom and that he doesn't know who he is without football. He asks MG to compel that into him and MG says that he would rather help him with that on the other side. Ethan mentions that with great power comes great responsibility. He asks MG how is he going to use his powers for good and MG's timer goes off. It is time for him to compel Ethan again and Ethan asks him to not take away all of his memories, at least the part where he and MG met. Ethan says that he could really use a friend and that was so sweet and I love that. 
Lizzie and Hope are respecting each other and telling each other sweet things, and I love the empowerment between them. It works out, and it shrinks the gremlin to many baby size. They all work together to pull Cleo out of the well. The gremlin is whimpering, and Hope steps on it and squishes it to death. <laughs> Hope and Landon are lying in bed, and they have an honest conversation about how he is her everything. Landon says that he can't be everything to her, and that he doesn't want to get in between her and her friends. He tells Hope to have him a little less, and to have everyone else a lot more, because there is enough Hope Microsoft to go around. They kiss, and it is such a cute moment. She tells him that she is going to take his advice, and she leaves. Alaric is walking Josie home, and turns out she is staying with Atlanta in her old house. And I'm like, oh, this brings back so many memories of Vampire Diaries. Like, that house has seen a lot and been through a lot, literally. <laughs> Alaric has an honest conversation with Josie about everything. He tells Josie that she can talk to him about anything. He mentions that even though it's really hard, he is trying to let Josie go and let her grow up. And that was so sweet, and he was emotional, too. Alaric says that he has to get back to the school, and Josie suggests that he stay for dinner. Josie mentions that Elena is going to be home soon, and she is making this famous Salvatore recipe. Josie says that they can talk about some stuff, and mentions Finch, and that it's complicated. Alaric says that Malibor can wait, and the last person she wants him to take relationship advice from is Damon. <laughs> that was hilarious. They both go inside. Caleb and Cleo are walking to Mystic Falls, and he tells her that watching the stars is magic, just like her. And I'm like, aww. <laughs> he says that he wants to stop and check on MG and make things right with him. He sees MG and Ethan playing football on the field, and you can see that Caleb is feeling bad. And I think more so he is feeling replaced, and that makes me sad. Cleo says that she knows the shortcut, and she softly grabs his arm, and they walk away. Ethan and MG agree to keep their secret between them, and turns out he didn't compel him. Hope joins Lizzie at night to help her find the portal. They talk and make amends, and I love this. Hope offers Lizzie to join her and land it for a movie night. Lizzie says that Hope going to the extremes got her what she wanted, but for herself, it's not the same. She mentions that Josie is not here for her, and as hard as she tries to be tough, she misses her sister. And I feel bad for Lizzie because she is really hurting right now, but I do believe at some point Josie and MG will both come back to the Salvatore school. It's just going to take some time. Hope hugs Lizzie and they go back to the school for the movie night. Lizzie says that she doesn't know where the monsters are coming from and hopes that they will stop. Hope and Lizzie walk away and it flashes to the top of the tree and it shows a monster watching them. Alara comes back to his office and Dorian tells him that he has seen the artifact before. He shows Alara a photo of Albert Einstein with the artifact in the photo. Dorian also shows him two other photos of Rasputin and Napoleon Bonaparte. The episode ends with Dorian saying that he's going to go with cause for concern. So I'm like, oh man. To wrap up this video, I'm going to do three quick things. First, my quick thoughts on the episode. This episode was a feeler, but it still had its moments that made me laugh. The pink gremlin causing chaos and talking smack was somewhat entertaining to watch. The main highlights in this episode for me was MG and Ethan and Alaric and Josie. Second, my thoughts on next week's promo it shows yet another monster who can show them things and has a crazy looking face with like black stuff running down their face is crazy <laughs> but that episode will definitely be interesting third i'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode so my favorite scene alaric and josie's conversation on elena's doorstep it was sweet how alaric got emotional telling josie that it's hard to let her go because she's his baby i appreciate him promising josie that he's going to do better as a father for both her and lizzie and i hope that he really holds that um favorite quote more like Nominate Yourself Into Our Pants by Lizzie. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Favorite duo, Ethan and MG. I love how they bonded while he was waiting for the Ravain to leave his system. Them geeking out over the comic books was so cute. And I'm glad that they have each other as friends now. So it's, it's really, really good to see. Favorite look, Josie's sweater with the bell-bottom pants with the high boots was a really cute look. And I also really liked her earrings that she was wearing. It was like a multi-set, so that was really cute too. My WTF moment, I would say the fact that, that the pink gremlin could talk and it was talking smack any and every chance that it could. So that was just like, wow. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy my review of Legacies. I review other shows like Riverdale, All American, Good Trouble, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, please check out those videos on my channel and subscribe. Let's keep the conversation going and let me know your thoughts about the episode in the comments. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. and See you guys next week.